Good evening, I'm Jessica Harthorn. Tonight we're following developing news out of Marshall, where News Channel 3 has just confirmed Ford could be a new tenant. Developers are eyeing 2.5 square miles of land for an electric vehicle battery plant, which could bring thousands of new jobs to Calhoun County. And this won't come without a cost, though. News Channel 3's Mike Kravsik joining us live in Marshall to explain the harsh reality that some people face tonight. Mike? Yeah, Jessica, the news is a big deal for an area that's lost about um, quite a number of jobs in the last two decades, a thousand to be exact. Talk of this mega site becoming a reality is the talk of the town. Property owners now have a hard choice. Do they sell the land or see what happens when they hold out? We just got a spokes or we got a uh, comment from a Ford spokesperson who says they are not confirming the negotiations at this point, but they do confirm the company is looking to build a plant with a partner that includes a China-based battery producer. Ford says at this point they have not selected a location for that plant just yet. This swath of land in Marshall Township is one step closer to becoming a multi-billion dollar electric vehicle plant. It would be a change for the entire community. A local elected official confirming to News Channel 3 that Ford is close to a deal with Calhoun County leaders to build the factory on the more than 1,000 acre mega site near I-69 and I-94. As part of the project, officials say Ford would partner with a Chinese company that builds lithium ion batteries. It's jobs that will last years into the future. I mean, EVs are the future, so it will be a plant that doesn't close in three years. It won't close with the next model changeover. Uh, it's the future. Local economic developers are tight-lipped about Ford's involvement, but have previously told us a project like that could bring about 2,500 high-paying jobs. There's really no transparency, especially when people down to the very township level have uh, signed non-disclosure agreements. Rebecca Glotfelty says her family agreed to sell their 286-acre property near the site once the deal goes through. She says in the past, other deals have fallen apart. They've been saying for like a year, you know, like there's somebody's interested, so they could be a buyer, and then they go someplace else. In recent weeks, the Marshall Area Economic Development Alliance has been acquiring hundreds of acres of property. Joan Chapman says she's not selling. I think it's going to destroy our small little town feel. In the market in Marshall right now, there's not enough houses. The governor of Virginia recently turned down Ford's offer to build the EV plant there citing a desire to cut ties with the Chinese communist government. Business professor Eric Gordon says Virginia's loss could mean big gains for the auto industry in Marshall and Michigan as a whole. It's always been a big part of our industry and we need it to stay a big part of our industries. Now, if this plant in Marshall Township is built, it would be the fourth of its kind in Michigan. Governor Whitmer's office, meanwhile, not commenting on any specifics of negotiations in a statement she touts in less than a year. Michigan has had a total of $13 billion in EV and battery manufacturing projects. Tonight, we introduce you to our new series of stories called Unsung Heroes. It's about ordinary people doing extraordinary things in their mid-Michigan communities to make a difference. Tonight, we feature a local artist who is creating a canvas that reaches far and wide, and that artistry involves a network of people. She's making accommodations for artists of every ability, even people who might not be able to create otherwise. I've been an artist all of my life. Started out when I was a kid. My dad built a studio in our garage for me, and that was my start. Cause and Effect Gallery in Fenton is the creation of artist and owner-director Annie Anglum. There is a cause. I began to look for new space uh, where I would be able to accommodate people of differing needs. And an effect. See what comes people like me to come. Pink and purple are Marin O'Brien's favorite colors with which to work. She says art calms her, and she thinks the world of Annie for giving her an amazing opportunity to create. This great. Marin's art is an important part of Annie's larger gallery, including a wall of tiles called Our Community. 
It's a work in progress canvas created by people of all abilities, and it will one day stretch all the way back to a larger display. This is the part of the gallery where Annie features the work of all Michigan artists, but let me take you somewhere in her gallery. It's where all the classes are taught and where the creativity and magic happens. It's right in here. On this day, Annie's clients gather to learn silversmithing, which is now one of her specialties. And be careful. And she accommodates everyone, including those who are what she refers to as differently abled. In the uh, studio space, I've got a workstation with silversmithing that raises and lowers. Um, instead of foot-operated tools, I've got hand-operated tools instead. I can accommodate somebody with the use of just one hand, and I provide earmuffs for folks on the autism spectrum. Annie says one of her artist friends with multiple sclerosis who uses a motorized chair has been her inspiration to help make the creative experience a possibility for everyone. So for me, inclusion is everything. Art is so healing for people, and I want people to be able to come in here and feel welcomed and be able to participate. The gallery has been around for four years, but getting through the COVID-19 pandemic was a challenge. That never stopped Annie, though. She continues to provide opportunities for others to help her give back. Annie and her clients have been piecing together a community mural since last July. That mural will go up in downtown Fenton at the community center in the next few months. Additionally, each quarter, Annie donates a portion of gallery sales to a nonprofit organization. She also provides internships for high school students. Mid-Michigan now is shining a spotlight on the remarkable people who are giving back to their mid-Michigan communities. So please tell us about those unsung heroes. Send us an email to news at NBC25news.com. Attention, Stella. Developing tonight, a Kalamazoo family is struggling to find safe housing after lead was discovered in their rental home and in their blood. Tonight, News Channel 3's Autumn Pitcher joins us live at the Kalamazoo County Health Department to explain what public health leaders are doing to protect families. Autumn? The health department is supporting a new bill that was introduced in January, requiring physicians to test for lead poisoning in kids. Now, Troy White, his wife and six kids got lead poisoning stemming from the lead paint in their rental home. And the more purple it is, the more lead is in the house. After finding out their daughter Hope had lead in her system, the Whites decided to get checked. And then we got a call from the health department and they said that her lead level was, I think hers was 15.5. More Once tests finding all lead. eight Explosion. family members had lead poisoning. Oh, yes. Even more testing on their home came back but positive for lead in the paint it, throughout the he, entire he house. It's, it's, in the it's in the walls, in the, windows, the front you, porch, the back porch. Like the beams that hold the porch up. Patricia Hurst is a registered nurse at the Kalamazoo County Health Department. She says lead is present in most homes built before 1978. There is no safe lead amount in a home because there's no lead safe uh, amount in our blood. The White's home was rented through Open Doors Kalamazoo. The family tells me before moving in, they were told there was no lead paint inside. I was... I was mad. <laughs> like, I was very upset because I'm like, you know, at least... You know, if the, the city is doing, you know, inspections and, you know, at least make that part of the inspection. The Whites also bought their own lead kit. These test swabs turn purple, indicating yeah, lead almost nice. immediately when swiping the walls. The Whites went to their landlord for help, open doors, then asking them if they wanted to be placed in a different home. We were like, well, has that house been tested for lead? And they were like, no, none of our houses have. They've been staying in Airbnbs for months, open doors offering to pay a first month rent for their next home. No amount of money can, you know, cover the fact that our kids were sick. Like, <laughs> there's no amount of money ever. 
Troy says a document was given to their family by Open Doors stating that they will not sue them. Now, after refusing to sign this document, they received a notice that they would have to be out of the home by February 28th. Now, I have reached out to Open Doors and they have not yet responded.